Welcome to Steen Smokehouse number 16. A very good friend of mine, Deborah, lives in California. That's actually where I grew up. She was out here visiting a few weeks ago and I was telling her about my YouTube channel and what we do and what we cook and so on and the different pits we use. And she has a kettle grill and she wanted to know how she could do ribs on her kettle grill without sauce. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate that to her. I'm not going to use anything fancy or anything that she wouldn't have. I'm going to use my Weber kettle, which is going to be probably pretty similar to what she has. I'm going to use a rack of St. Louis ribs or about uh, probably three and a half pounds. I'm going to do them the, the way I used to do them. Uh, I, use, I got great results every time. I, I really am I'm pleased with the Weber products. Every Weber product I've ever had has been just top notch. I use my big pit now to cook all my big cuts of meat. I count ribs as a big cut of meat merely because it'll sit on that big uh, smoker for hours and just become more tender and tender and tender. I haven't used the Weber to do that for a while. Not that I have anything against the Weber. Like T-Roy says, I like to show up my grills, <laughs> all of them a little love from time to time. And uh, this time I'm gonna do it on the Weber for Deb. So in a moment, I'll show you the uh, rack of ribs I bought for you, Deb, and I'll be right back. This is the rack of ribs I bought this afternoon for our rib project for Deb. They're just uh, regular old St. Louis style spare ribs I bought at my local grocery store. They're about 3.3 pounds, something like that. I just wanted to show you how they look like when you pick them up in the store. And then we will go to the next step and get them prepared, trim them, remove the membrane, season them, and get them ready to be introduced to our Weber grill. So, if you'll hang with me, we'll be right back. This is actually a beautiful rack of ribs from our neighborhood Albertsons. There's two schools of thought of what I'm going to do next, and that's pulling the membrane off. I always do it. I learned it a long time ago. Sometimes the uh, membrane comes out chewy. When we cook them on our big pits, uh, I've tried it with and without. You can't really notice it. The way the big pit renders down things, it becomes almost invisible. But we're using our Weber today, uh, and I'm going to take the membrane off. I'll do that in just a second for you. If we're lucky, this will come off in one piece. If we're not, it will come off in a couple pieces. But the way to do it is you get a regular old paper towel. You grab the end over here, try to work it and peel it to get it started. And then you merely pull it off like that. That was pretty good. I'll, I'll go along with that. Most of it came off. I'm going to trim this edge a little bit because this meat's just going to overcook and it's not going to be very appealing. So we'll cut that there. Then I'm going to square it off a little bit just for aesthetic sake. There. That's, uh, that's really all the trimming you have to do. In addition to our normal 50-50 mix of kosher salt and fresh ground pepper, we're going to use a little bit of this Grillmates uh, pork rub. We're going to use some regular old store-bought rib rub. We're going to use some cayenne pepper. We're going to put that on first so we can see how much we put on and we don't overheat it. We're going to put some granulated garlic powder on. And this is Charlie Verga's Rendezvous Memphis Original Famous Seasoning. I like to put that on. You can get that at Amazon. Uh, it has a nice little kick to it. And other than that, at the end we're going to sprinkle a little bit of uh, brown sugar on and let the ribs rest a little bit and then we'll cook them. I began by doing the backside first. I'm just using this uh, rib rub from Albertsons. You can get it any place. It's uh, Fiesta products, I think it is. I don't put a lot on it. I just put it on there to add a little color, a little character to it. And that's it for that side. Then we flip it over. Cayenne pepper is going to go on first. I'm not going to put a whole bunch on there. I'm just going to put a little bit of a hint on there. I don't want uh, somebody to get offended by too much heat. I don't like it too much. That's about enough of that. Then I'm going to put our garlic on there. I'm only going to put a little bit of that on too for the same reason. I'm just going to put a hint on there. Uh, once it cooks in, it'll all blend together nicely. Then I'm going to put our standard salt and pepper. I'm putting a lighter colored uh, seasoning on it first so I can see how much I'm putting on because the reddish stuff all kind of blends together and you don't really know. So we'll put that on there. Next is our Charlie Vargas Rendezvous seasoning and this is this is good stuff. And you can get it in Amazon like I said. 
And I put quite a bit of this on here. Next, the grill mate pork rub. Also, I put this on pretty liberally. What we're doing is building up different flavors. Uh, I don't put much on the backside, as you saw, because the backside has very little meat on it. And we, although we did pull the membrane off, that's going to be sitting closer to the fire. And the last thing I put on is brown sugar. Brown sugar will help it build kind of a crust on it. And I don't put very much of it on it. It doesn't need it. We're not putting on it to really flavor it. But it kind of bonds all these other spices together because the brown sugar will kind of melt a little bit and put a nice little glaze on it. And after that, we're done. I'm going to go get the rubber ready to cook and I'll be right back with you. In the foreground is our small chimney starter. That's the one we use on the pit barrel because it holds exactly 40 charcoal briquettes and it's the perfect size to get inside a pit barrel so you can pour it in there. Today we're going to use our big other Weber chimney starter. It holds a lot more charcoal and I'm going to need a lot more charcoal for the cook today. The Weber is different than the pit barrel. We're going to be cooking a kind of like a minion method where you put it away from the meat indirectly and uh, we're going to put a water basket in it. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But right now, we're going to light the big chimney smoker up. It only takes about 15 minutes, sometimes a little more, sometimes less, but right about that. And we'll have all the hot coals we need to begin our cook. I've added the charcoal to the Weber and now I'm going to add water to the water pan. We are going to use a water pan that keeps the environment moist and helps uh, keep the ribs from drying out when we cook it on a long cook. I'm going to put the lid on for now and let it uh, warm up inside then we'll be, uh, we'll be adding the ribs to it. For now, I've got the bottom vent full open and the top vent full open. Uh, in a few minutes when it comes to temp, uh, it's got a thermometer on it. I'm going to close down the lower one a little bit and close down the upper one. What I want is a kind of a nice even flow from this side of the, the uh, pit to the exit side of the pit and the ribs will be uh, in the way. The Weber's up to about 400 degrees at the dome. Uh, this is the fire side. The other side where the meat's going to be is going to be a little less than that. I like to keep it probably 375 or you know somewhere in that ballpark uh, on this side which is going to be a little less on the other side because we're going to do this kind of not necessarily low and slow but it's not going to be fast and hot either but in the background you see our Kingsford uh, blue and white label charcoal and I'm also putting some of that uh, best of the west natural oak lump charcoal in there it gives it another uh, another little flavor to have so anyway I'm going to pause this and get our meat on the grill. Also going to add a couple little chunks of pecan wood. That's another one of those uh, subtle things I don't like to overpower to cook with wood, but I do like to add another layer of flavor, as we call it. One there, one there, and now I'm going to shut her down and nothing left to do now but wait. We're a little over an hour into our cook. The temps, oh, between 300 and 350, which I'm okay with that. It's after an hour, the coals kind of die off a little bit. So we're going to have to add a few more coals. I'm going to spritz it with apple juice, which I've gotten kind of in the habit of doing all my meats on my very long cooks. It really helps add a, a little moisture to it you wouldn't have had otherwise. And I got that idea from T-Roy. Thanks again, T-Roy. But anyway, if you want to watch, I'll go ahead and open it up. I haven't looked at them for an hour, so I'm not sure what we're going to find. He 
these are really looking good. I, I wish you could smell <laughs> they smell. They're they're awesome. I'm used to I've been uh, cooking on the bait pit a lot more than my Weber and um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip these around the other way so the other side is closer to the heat and I'm gonna add a little bit more charcoal to it and the water pan is doing just fine and we'll let it roll from there. When we started this cook I set my target temp at this end of the Weber. I'd like to be about 375 and we're pretty close to that. It's uh, been running that about 25 or 30 minutes. Just like our big pits, the smoke signature we want is almost invisible. And that's what we got here. It's just kind of a nice wispy blue smoke. We've actually added some pecan wood and we've got some lump charcoal in there along with the Kingsford. I think it's a mixture of competition and the blue and white label bag stuff. But anyway, I want to give you a look-see at it at this point in the cook. We're about three hours into this cook. I'm going to go ahead and pull the lid off. We're going to check done this with the point of our ThermoWorks thermometer. I'm not checking for temp. I'm just seeing uh, how tender it is. And we'll check it. Yeah, it's pretty tender. I think, uh, I think we're about ready to pull this rack of ribs off, cut them up, and see how we did. I'm thinking we did pretty well. Thanks, you all, for joining me. And I'll show them to you in just a moment. Okay, folks, moment of truth. I'm going to hopefully find a, there we go, just like that. That's exactly what we were looking for. They're perfect. They're tender. They're done. They have a smoke ring on them. I uh, didn't use any sauce dub. I used apple juice. That's the only thing I sprayed on that was liquid. Uh, everything else was powder, uh, rubs that you probably have in your kitchen already. And it's definitely good stuff. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to put it on a platter and display it. Steed Smokehouse. Deborah, thank you for the suggestion. I probably wouldn't have done that. I'm so used to cooking on the big pit. I kind of leave my Weber for steaks and things like that, but <laughs> these things came out amazing. They're delicious. They're, they're just perfectly done. I can barely get them off the grill. They want to fall apart. When we say fall apart, we don't want them to be overcooked fall apart. We want them to be appropriately cooked fall apart, and these are those. So I'll tell you what, Deb, Cheers to you. You've been my friend for a very long time, and I love you. Thank you so much, and I hope uh, those of you that haven't subscribed to Steam Smokehouse do. Till next time, thank you.